You're watching the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Yes, good morning. Welcome back to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. I hope you're all doing well. Quick video for you today, just a little 10 minute to tell you all the madnesses that happened in the transfer window yesterday when it comes to Liverpool, all the players that we didn't sign, the players that could still leave. And then, of course, looking ahead to the Villa game tomorrow at two o'clock at Anfield. We've got Luke Robinson from the UTV podcast, the Up the Villa podcast. He's going to give us a, a few of his thoughts going into the game as well as a score prediction. But before we get into any of it, Make sure you smash that like button. Please comment with your lineup predictions, your score predictions as well. And then, of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I don't know what you're playing at, really, if you haven't. But let's talk about yesterday. Massive, massive day in the footballing calendar. The last day of the transfer window, but not in the Saudi league, which we'll come to. But Liverpool going in for Ryan Gravenberg, number 38, our new midfielder. Greets Klopp, says how happy he is to be there. We love to see it. It's the man that really was in a short list in, back in 2021 of players and midfielders that Liverpool wanted to buy. That list at the time included Jude Bellingham, Relian Chouameni and Ryan Gravenberg. So we've got a man that we've been after for a while. They both joked, Klopp and Gravenberg, when they got in the same room and said, finally, you're here. So you can tell that they've been speaking about this for a while. Again, he joins a list of Dutch players that have played for Liverpool. Sander Westerveld, Doug Kite, Gini Wijnaldum, Kijana Hoover, Trying to think of a couple more. I'm sure they'll come to me. But, of course, he joins Van Dijk and Hakpo in the uh, in the Dutch uh, contingency, let's call it, at Liverpool. We love to see it. Really excited to hear what you guys think he's actually going to bring to Liverpool. We know he can play as a 6, a 8 or a 10. He's kind of got all of the things wrapped into one as, as what you want from a modern midfielder. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how... He gets on at Liverpool. I think it was a good price. He clearly wanted the move, which is more than we can say from Lavia and Caicedo. Obviously, it's too late to have him involved in Sunday. But listen, he gets uh, a really nice international break now to go away and and really get to know his new teammates. Obviously, he's going to be away with Gakpo and Van Dijk for Holland now. But really interested to see how he gets on at Liverpool. Um I've got a lot of hope for him. And now, listen, every single Liverpool fan has to get behind the new signings now. And there's a, you know, a train of thought to say that maybe he isn't an out-and-out out number six that maybe Liverpool needed and wanted. But at the same time, he ticks so many boxes that you're just buzzing that he's actually joined the club. 21 years of age, really great ball carrier, very physical as well. Even for someone with kind of a slight body frame, which I guess Fabinho had, they called him El Flaco, which means the skinny one. So maybe he comes in to replace Fabinho, but it's nice to know that he can always strike a free kick. He's got a great long range effort as well. So he again, he ticks a lot of boxes at Liverpool. So really looking forward to seeing how he comes in and gets on. And then again, he'll be right involved, I'm assuming, from the Wolves game straight after the international break, which I'm looking forward to, to be honest. But yeah, Ryan Gravenberg, new number 38 at Liverpool. Let me know in the comments down below how you're feeling generally about him coming through the door on the last day of the season. They made us sweat. Palinha going to Bayern, that move broke down. But then we also heard that it didn't depend on, the Gravenberg deal didn't depend on them finding a replacement for um, him at Bayern. So you have to feel for Palinha in the situation. But I want to know what your comments and thoughts are down below. How are you feeling? What do you want to see? What can Ryan Gravenberg offer Liverpool that we don't already have? Which position do you see him in playing in best? The 68 or the 10? Let me know. I would probably give the transfer window for us a 7.5 out of 10. Now, that might seem a little bit harsh, but when you consider the fact that we've brought in three, four midfielders now, it's a massive tick box. I think at the start of the window, if you told me that Liverpool would bring in four midfielders, I would have laughed. Uh, I didn't think that was possible. I was assuming that we'd bring in two. But I also assumed that we keep Fabinho and Henderson. So we had to adapt. We had to move within the market. And we did just that by bringing in Gravenberg and Endo at late stages in the window. So massive tick when it comes to the midfield. But for me personally, I do think we've missed out on buying a left-footed centre-back. Really disappointed to see us not going in for Bella Kotchap from Southampton. He was available for a two and a half million pound loan fee and then a 25 million pound um, buy option at the end of that loan. He's actually gone to PSV Eindhoven. Now, I think we should have been all over that. It was a very, very low risk solution that we were all looking for. We obviously know that Kanate is fairly injury prone, as is Matip. 
We can't really rest our laurels on Gerald Quanza. And obviously Van Dijk is now suspended. So there's question marks over all four centre-backs at the minute in terms of their longevity, in terms of their, their experience. And that's why I think a Bella Kotchap would have really topped us off and made the transfer window complete in terms of ticking every box that we needed to tick. Obviously, Nat Phillips has gone to Celtic as well, which I think is, is great for him. But for us, again, we've left ourselves a little bit short at the back. We've got four centre-backs now. I'm just hoping there's no more suspensions, no more injuries that keep those guys out. So again, we'll have to see how they all get on. Um, but there you go. There's the transfer window madness summed up for you. Let me know how you rate it. I've said a 7.5. I'd be interesting to see what you guys thought below. And then, of course, we go back in in January. I guess the one thing to finish up on is that the Saudi window still stays open for 19 more days. So it's going to be a nervy 19 days for Liverpool fans. But I think as well, the Saudis, them knowing that our window is closed, that should give them a little bit of a reminder that this is definitely a no-go. It's a hard no from Liverpool. Listen, there's nothing to say that they will come in again, and I'm sure they will. Um, but they now know that our window is shut and we know that we can't replace him. Even if they gave us a billion today, we couldn't spend it. So there is a train of argument that I've seen that Liverpool kind of let him go and we change formation and we look to buy someone in January. The problem with that is we could be out of everything in January. So there's no time to waste in terms of keeping Mo at the club. We can't afford to let him go at any point, at least until next season. But based on his physicality is his determination, his hunger to be one of the best players ever at Liverpool. He's still got records to achieve. Seeing his physique, this guy could play till he's 40. So I don't even think I'm part of the crew that says, let him leave next summer. I would actually get him to sign a new contract. Just because they're pressuring us doesn't mean we have to sell. And there is going to be a point where the number becomes too big that you have to sell. But at the same time, we're Liverpool. Tell them no, they're going to have to listen to it. We know he, he wants to go there potentially at one stage. We know they want him there now. But we've got to stand strong and make sure that we're not going to be bullied into a deal we don't want to take. So I'm saying, even if they come back from in January, even if they come back next summer, it's still a hard no. People are saying he's 31. But still, look how good he is at 31. Look how good he still will be at 32, 33, 34. So Mo Salah still, in my opinion, cannot leave now or next season. Why should we be bullied into allowing our best players to leave? We don't want to become a selling club. And I think with Coutinho, yes, we invested straight back into the team. But with Salah, you don't just replace Salah, right? That's a two or three player replacement you're looking at. Yes, we've got Ben Doak, but it's impossible to put all the pressure on him now. So I'm saying keep him. Let him sign a new contract. Uh, again, that's probably going to split opinion. But let me know in the below comments how you feel about Mo Salah. I'll give you a few options. Do you sell him now for 250? Do you sell him now, or sorry, do you sell him next summer for 100? Or do you make him sign a new contract and let him see out his prime still years at Liverpool? I'm saying the next three or four years, I still want to see Mo Salah as a Liverpool player. So the transfer deadline day, I'm happy it's closed. To be honest, it's a big headache. I can now unfollow Fabrizio. I can take off the live notifications for David Ornstein and the rest, the James Pierces, the David Lynches. I'm happy about that, but also knowing that they're going to come in with another bid, we have to stand strong. That is my thoughts on it. Let me know what yours are in the comments. Um, a little chat about Aston Villa. Um, listen, massively hard game. And again, we're going to hear Luke Robinson's thoughts on this from the UTV podcast. Great Villa podcast, doing cool things. So make sure you go and check his preview out as well. Um, but get on this. After failing to score in four of the first seven Premier League games in 2023, we always start awfully in January. Liverpool have scored all but two in the last 18, netting, netting the most goals of any side since the start of March. Only Brighton and Spurs are on a longer run of consecutive scoring games than the Reds. But Aston Villa, after losing 5-1 to Newcastle in their first Premier League game this season, Villa have won their last two, looking very dangerous. The likes of DRB, McGinn, um, Watkins doing big things up front for Villa, which makes me very nervous for the game. I'm not going to lie. This isn't a, a walkover. This isn't a, a Liverpool-Aston Villa of 10, 15 years ago. This is a top, top Villa side that are competing in Europe as well. But they are the first top flight side to lose their opening game by four plus goals and then win their next two games since QPR in 1987. Um only Manchester United and Chelsea have won more Premier League games away at Liverpool than Villa. They've won six, though the villains are winless in their last five five league visits to Anfield. I remember the days of 
Wyman scoring. I remember the days of Benteke making it really difficult for Liverpool. But listen, Villa have got the third best away record at Anfield. So it's going to be a tough one. For sure it is. Now, looking at their players, there's danger from all over the pitch, really, especially... Um, in that midfield where they've really clicked and especially in the front line as well. Leon Bailey, Watkins, Diaby and they've got lads off the bench that can make a massive impact too. Here's my lineup prediction. Let me know what yours are in the comments. Going Allison and go the best goalkeeper in the world. I think even the most ardent uh, rival fans would admit that as well. Trent at right back. We've seen that um, Connor Bradley, unfortunately, has taken a big knock in his injury comeback. So, it's going to be Trent at right back for the foreseeable, whether we like it or not. Maybe Gomez can deputise there when Trent needs a rest. But I'm saying it will be Gomez and Matip at the back. Um, still, Canate is out for this. Still, Thiago has suffered another little setback in training, which isn't cool, Jurgen Klopp said. But really looking forward to seeing him come back sooner rather than later. We need him. We want him. He's got to be available after the international break. Now... Uh, left back Robertson in the midfield. Curtis Jones will be back, but I'm going to start with Endo, McAllister and Soboslai again. Uh, I'd love to see Endo go a full 90 minutes without you know, having one of his teammates sent off. So no red cards in this game, please. I'm really uh, you know, extending that over to the players. No red cards. Keep your heads. Aston Villa will be saying, look, they've had two red cards in two games. Let's try and rattle them, get under their skin. But we can't get along with that because we need 11 players on the pitch, even though we do win both games with 10 men. But 11 on the pitch. Now, this is where it gets interesting because Mo Salah will play in this game and he will get a massive reputation and, a, and, a, and an applause. Applause? I sound Dutch. A massive standing ovation when he comes onto the pitch tomorrow. We're going to be singing his name forever. What a legend of the club. But he'll play. Nunes has to start this game. Nunes starts this game for me. And then Luis Diaz starts as well. And then you can bring on a Gakpo, a, a Jota, a Curtis Jones, a Harvey Elliott. We're stacked on the bench now. So looking forward to seeing that team start. I'm going for a, a very, very slim 2-1 Liverpool win. I'll be over the moon with that. But let's see what Luke Robertson thinks. He's, again, from the UTV podcast. He's obviously very confident right now. Let's see what he thinks the score is going to be tomorrow. Game. Both teams will want to look to go for it and want to look to win the game. I think Liverpool are yet to have a complete 90-minute performance, so that too should give Villa a little bit of confidence going into this game. It's a good test for Villa. It's a good test to see where we are, especially... Uh, away from home so I think Villa will want to look to get on the ball get their possession based game going uh, look to hit Liverpool on the counter attack as well so I expect a lot of goals I've got to back my team uh, so I'm going to go for a 2-1 Villa win but I think it's going to be a difficult game you know Nunes's goals last weekend were absolutely fantastic and, and I like some of the signings in McAllister and Savasla. I think that those two have settled down really well but I think at the minute I think Liverpool aren't quite where they want to be performance wise so I think that will give Emery sort of a, a little bit of um, optimism going into this game that he can do a job on Klopp's Liverpool so enjoy the game up the villa. Up the Villa, Luke said before in that video, actually predicted a 2-1 Villa win. So let me know what your predictions are down below and then go over to Luke's channel and watch his Liverpool preview as well. Really looking forward to the game. Massive game. I'm going to be watching it here with Doyle. We're going to have a video for you straight after. And then next week we go back into hot topics and looking forward to the international break as well. A bit of a break for Liverpool. So last game before the international window. This has to go well for Liverpool. It has to be three wins in a row and it has to be another away defeat, a big away defeat for Aston Villa as well. Massive talent in that squad, but we've got to be massively on it to make sure that we come and get the three points at Anfield on Saturday. I'm going for 2-1. Again, let me know your thoughts to all the ins and outs of the transfer window. It's finally shut, but the Saudi one isn't. How are you feeling about that? Any nerves or anxiety? Do let me know. But listen, there's your match preview and your transfer window roundup. Please, again, let me know in the comments your lineup prediction, your score prediction. Again, smash the comments with your... Um, with your thoughts and everything I've spoken about and subscribe to the channel as well. Great time to subscribe to the COP TV. But there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Press like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you after the game. Come on, Liverpool. Beat the Villa. Get in there. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the COP TV. The voice of, of football's, football's most, most famous, famous stand. stand.